You have asked to grow rich. That is a process. You do not just wake up one day and zap you're rich. That would be counter to the natural order of things. Your growth to riches is an organic change which occurs over a period of time. That means you will constantly have to step up to a new level of wealth. Let us say you are accustomed to spending $20 on a pair of shoes. When you go looking for shoes you look at the $20 variety. Well, you want to get rich, right? That is what you asked for, isn't it? So now when you go shopping, look at the $100 or $200 shoes. Upgrade yourself. It is all part of the process of accepting the level of your prosperity. Unless you set your sights on the more expensive things of this world, you will forever stay where you are. Rich is as rich does. Growing rich means constantly stepping up to a new level. It is extremely important that you claim the things that go with the level you are stepping up to. Stretch yourself. Get what you really want. Claim your wealth or you will not grow. If you stay at your current level of prosper ity, if you get comfortable with what you have, you are telling the universe that you really didn't want what you asked for. And you wasted your money on this book, not to mention all the 79 cent, wide ruled, spiral notebooks you have purchased. Besides, stepping up to a new level creates even more enthusiasm. Think about buying a new $200 pair of shoes, and you get excited. Wow! You are wearing expensive shoes. It feels great. You stand a little taller. You walk a little sharper. You look fantastic. All of a sudden it hits you. You are get ting richer. It's working. This stuff really works. Look at your feet. You're rich. You might feel so good you decide to go to a fine restaurant. Hey, you certainly have the shoes for it, right? Then, when you get to the restaurant, do the little things wealth affords, valet park your car, order the filet instead of the sirloin, get a nice appetizer. This is how enthusiasm helps bring the goodies to mama and papa. Little by little, bit by bit, you grow into your wealth. First your shoes, then a fine dinner, then a new house and, before you know it, you are rich beyond your wildest dreams. You cannot save up for wealth. You grow into it. AC Sept the gifts God gives you. Claim your wealth. True security is much more than a savings account or an empty credit card. True security is much more than a retirement package or a portfolio of stocks and bonds. All these things can go away in the blink of an eye. Banks fail. Companies downsize. Stock markets crash. Even the monetary system itself can vanish into thin air. Nothing in this world lasts forever. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, ye all which it inherit, shall dissolve, and, like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rock behind. Shakespeare, The Tempest, Act 4, Scene 1. True security is trusting the universe to provide for you. Always. Trusting in God means not being afraid. The universe is all-powerful. It gives you what you ask for. Fear is not out low. Fear you may not be able to afford the things you want. Fear you may not have enough. Fear you may not be able to pay your bills. Fear your income may stop. When you feared the loss of money, you have made money your God. Ask and ye shall receive. Ask that it is paid for easily, and the money will come to you. Decide what you want, and the money comes. Claim your wealth, and it will come. This is the point that you must understand. This is the difference that makes millionaires out of wage earners. You do not save the money and buy the thing. You buy the thing and the money comes. Claiming is cosmic buying power. This is critical to your success. This concept is the gasoline that powers your new car. It is the fuel that heats your new mansion. You do not save money for what you want. You buy what you want and God sends the money to pay for it. You find and claim your house, and the universe gives you the money to close. You choose $200 shoes and the money will be there. I am not saying that you should write hot checks. 
I am not saying that you should max out your credit cards or go without food. I am saying that you must claim your wealth if you really want it. Here's an example. I collect rocks and crystals. Marilyn's Rose Quartz story perked my interest. I never collected anything before in my life and I absolutely love this hobby. I am constantly learning things and meeting interesting people who share my common interest. My wife and kids also enjoy rock collecting. Although my wife's rocks are generally much smaller than mine and are set in some form of jewelry. Well, late one night I was reading about this rare stone and I decided I had to have one. It was a citrine formed on top of smoky quartz. Many people believe it is supposed to attract wealth and increase profits. My kind of stone. I have also wanted to improve the quality of my collection. I wanted a showpiece. A mineral of exceptional quality. Of course, I wrote all these desires down in my 79 cent notebook. About two weeks later, my wife insisted we go to our favorite rock shop. She had jewelry that needed repair. Once in the store I saw a new specimen they recently AC acquired from a large private collection. Of course, it was a museum quality citrine on smoky quartz with a very hefty price tag. I loved the stone, but didn't have near enough money to buy it. I decided to wait and save up the money. Life, however, does not always work that way with this system. The next day I realized that this citrine was my stone. I had asked for it. I had written it down and visualized receiving it. I was excited about owning it. And there it was, waiting for me to act. I hurried back to the rock shop. I was there less than 10 minutes when two other, big collectors, came in to buy this very piece. I told the owner I wanted the rock without discussing the price or how I would pay for it. The store owner put my name on it. Right then. Later, he gave me a price much lower than I expected to pay. And he put the rock on layaway for me with nothing down. I literally acquired the rock without any money at all. And the only thing I did was claim it as mine. The store owner offered the price and the terms without my asking. I claimed what I wanted and the universe took care of everything else. Claim your wealth and it will come. In fact, your enthusiasm will soar and all the little difficulties of life will fade from the splendor of your success. When the going gets tough, claim more stuff. I have a friend. Dave, who regularly goes into a very expensive linen shop in Newport Beach. They have a set of sheets there that cost $900 per sheet. And which he has claimed as his. Once a week he goes in and touches those sheets. Now, since my friend does not even own a bed large enough to fit these sheets, most people would think that he is either crazy or seriously overextending himself. He, however, owns those sheets. He is claiming them now in full confidence that the money will come later. And the money always comes. A while back Dave introduced two men over coffee. One was an inventor and the other was an investor. It turns out, these guys are now in the process of closing a multi-million dollar deal. My friend gets a huge finder's fee for that introduction. Something he never expected. Those $900 sheets are coming home to Papa. Claim what you want and God sends the money. Claim your wealth and it will come. Step up to a new level. Get enthusiastic about this new life you want to live. Start living that life now. Today. Go out and buy something you want. Claim your wealth and the universe will take care of the details. God makes life effortless for us if we simply live it. Go shopping. Claim the things you want now and you will grow rich beyond your wildest dreams chapter 23 foolish spending beware 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 dangers lurk in this ocean of wealth and abundance good people can lose their birthright honest people who otherwise would have enjoyed brilliant careers happy families and living in the lap of luxury instead bring themselves to a tragic end they have everything and they lose it all. They lose what God has given them because they fail to recognize the dangers of spending money foolishly. 
My friend, the general, reminds me that spending your money in one of the following three ways is guaranteed to carry you, sooner or later, to the lagoon of broken dreams, where the murky waters of foolish spending will strip you of your wealth and your health and leave you stranded in the boggy swamp of those who might have been. Whatever you do, please, avoid spending your money in the full lowing ways. 1. Failing to tithe, spending God's money on yourself. Failing to tithe and then spending on yourself can be truly disastrous. You owe God 10% on every dollar you get. Period. It is His. Not yours. He does not like it when you cheat Him. He is doing all the work. You may think it is your genius or sweat that has created your wealth, but it is not. If you doubt who is doing the work, you can stop tithing for a month and watch your prosperity come to a screeching halt. Remember, tithing is not for God's benefit, it is for your benefit. God does not need your money. Tithing is for you. You tithe for your own benefit. You are paying for your spiritual growth. You are paying for the things you receive. You are keeping your ego in check and recognizing the source of everything you have. You are tithing because God is in charge and He expects you to. You tithe because you love God and it is good for you. Where you tithe is as important as tithing itself. You send your tithe to individuals, groups and institutions who provide you with spiritual assistance. Send your money to those who help you grow and learn spiritually. This is about cause and effect again. You send the money to pay for your growth. You do not take groceries from one store and pay another. You pay where you get the benefit and you increase the effectiveness of your tithe. Oh. Here's another thing to remember. You do not tithe based on need. Tithing is for your benefit, not for the benefit of the recipient. If you want to support homeless people, starving children or any number of excellent EF forts, good for you. But that is not tithing. That is charity. Giving freely to others. If you want to support a religious organization you left several years ago because they have fallen on hard times, great. Do it. You'll get a tenfold return. Just do not count it as your tithe. Because it is not. You tithe where you get the benefit. Tithing is for you, not them. Tithe 10% to God on every dollar you receive and you will be rich beyond your wildest dreams. If, however, you decide to keep it and spend it on yourself, he will do two things. One, he will stop giving you what you ask for. Two. He will take his 10% anyway. You will pay more for the things you want and need. Things will break down. Your wealth will decline. Your health will deteriorate. Relationships will erode and your life will become more a bowl of pits than cherries. A couple started using this system a few years ago and they did very well. They could not give 10% at first, so they gave what they could with the intention that they would pay more as their income grew. Well, they flower ished, and for a year they increased their tithing until they reached 10%. Then something happened, as it often does. This life is more of a test than a reality. Their income dropped for a period of time and their expenses had increased over time. They lived in a bigger house, they ate at nicer restaurants, they spent more on clothes and on and on. So they dropped down to giving 1% or 2% of their income. They continued with this level of tithing and, amazingly, their income continued to drop. Within six months, they were considering bankruptcy and blamed this system. Mumbo jumbo, I believe was the term. Fortunately, they asked for help, saw the problem and increased their tithing immediately. Their income rose AC accordingly. The universe will test us. God wants to make sure you will keep your word. Because once you stop tithing 10%, it is always harder to start again. Many, many people fail to receive their wealth for this very reason. 2. Playing God, saving other people. God allows no others before Him. Spending to save other people puts you between them and God. You are playing God. You become their savior. It is a seriously destructive practice. God will not allow it. He will take your money, your health and, eventually, your life. 
Let us assume you have followed all the steps outlined in this book and you have a great income and have everything you ever dreamed of having. What do you do now? Now, you start paying your sister's family's bills. You know how tough it is and you have plenty, right? Why not help them out? Pay their house payment. Month in and month out you pay the bills that keep them in their house. Sure. Your brother-in-law hates his job and would probably do better if he went back to Texas like he is always talking about doing. But what the heck, you know better. Besides, your sister is suffering. She is forced to buy her children, your nephews, used clothes. You are dressing your kids in designer wear and hers are practically in rags, one step up from the poor people your church takes Thanksgiving dinner to. Why not buy them some clothes, too? I don't mean for birthdays or Christmas or just an occasional gift, but every month you take them out and buy clothes. Or maybe it is easier to simply pay her credit card bills. What can it hurt? We are supposed to give after all. Right? Wrong. Dead broke wrong. There is a fine line between giving freely to others and playing God. Maybe God wants your sister and her family back in Texas. Maybe there's a car wreck waiting for them here, while Texas holds the key to their prosperity. Your money is the only thing keeping them here. Every sign in the world has told them to go, but you keep writing the checks. Or maybe your sister is supposed to get so frustrated that she gets a job that leads to a business from which they prosper. Maybe they are supposed to go into therapy and you deny them this natural evolution of their life. Or maybe the reverse occurs, because you buy them everything, he feels emasculated, they fight and eventually get divorced. Whatever the outcome is for them, it is worse for you. You put yourself in God's shoes. You took his place. You put yourself before God. And what did Moses carve on those stone tablets? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you pay somebody else's bills, if you become the source of their good, you will lose your money, your health and then your life. I know of a woman who learned this lesson the hard way. She had learned this system of achieving wealth and followed it to the letter. She tithed regularly, she gave freely of herself, she maintained a positive mental attitude and love was her favorite color. She and her husband had developed an excellent business, were in good health and never wanted for anything. Then she started paying her two brothers' families' bills. Month in and month out she paid their rent and their utilities and even their food bill. She even gave them cash to live on. This all came to light because her husband took ill. Slowly over the months, his health deteriorated. He worked fewer hours at the business, and he developed a strange unexplainable shortness of breath. His heart was okay, but he had no energy. He grew weaker every month as she paid her siblings' bills. Eventually, the business suffered. New business dried up. Old, long-established accounts stopped buying. Within a year the business was on the verge of bankruptcy, and he was in bed more days than not. The doctors had no explanation for his illness other than the modern-day equivalent of, he needs a good leeching. The truth was, he already had several leeches attached to his well-being. Once this woman stopped paying her family's bills, both her husband's health and the health of their business improved overnight. Literally the next day, an old client decided to come back. Her husband's mysterious illness eventually vanished into thin air. Her two brothers and their wives took back control of their own lives, and everyone lived happily ever after. Sometimes your own children can cause you to fall into this trap of playing God. Once your kids are grown, they need to develop their own relationships with the universe, directly. And you need to stay out of it. Everyone, even your own children, has the right to learn through their own actions, the law of cause and effect. If you get in the way, you hurt them as well as yourself. This can be very painful for a parent. Our friends had a 24-year-old daughter living with them. She never could seem to get enough money to buy a car much less live on her own. Our friends knew this wasn't good for anyone. Their daughter was constantly fighting with the mother. These fights were small, annoying problems that served as a constant irritation to the entire house. 
After consulting with Marilyn, our friends decided to charge their daughter room and board. It gave her a sense of worth she did not have before. She also got used to paying rent. On a higher scale, she was asking the universe to provide her with rent money. By paying her parents rent, she created a category for rent which the universe filled. Almost immediately she began making more money at work. Many of the problems at home went away. She made more money and had more fun. Within months, this girl bought a new car, found an apartment and moved out. Playing God is a very bad idea. It hurts everyone in bold. It stagnates your spiritual growth and creates an effect which can cost you everything. 3. Hoarding. Saving for the wrong reasons. Save for the wrong reason and the money train runs out of gas. The concept here is hoarding. Loving the money more than its source. Remember, the root of all evil is love of money. God wants you to trust in Him, to love Him above all things. When you hoard, you are placing your faith and trust in the money you have saved. You have put money above the good of the universe. You are saying that no matter what happens, you will have the dollars or pesos or yen you need to handle it. Which simply is not true. You cannot possibly save more money than God can take away. You are not as powerful as the universe. Think of the Titanic. It was designed to be unsinkable. The safest ship to ever sail the ocean blue. It was thought to be so safe that they didn't even take all the lifeboats on its maiden voyage. They left them back on the dock in England. It took five years for men to design and build the unsinkable Titanic and about two hours for the forces of creation to turn it into a rusting hulk on the ocean floor. The universe is more powerful than anything you can devise. Hoarding means you are asking God to prove his power bad idea. Very bad. This does not mean you cannot save money or invest or have retirement plans. All these things are well and good. It is the excess we are talking about. And as usual, the most important aspect is intent. What do you intend to do with the money you are saving? If you are hoarding money, squirreling it all away for a rainy day, watch out. The first thing that will happen is a downpour. You will get what you are preparing for. Every thought is a command. If you are saving for hard times, the subconscious produces exactly what you are most afraid will happen, hard times. Those rainy days will come, and you may very well be washed out to sea. Spend your money wisely and avoid the quicksand of spending foolishly. Tithe first with the first check you write. Do not, under any circumstances, play God. Save but do not hoard. Spend wisely and you most certainly will be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 24. Good wins. By now you may be asking yourself a good question. I know I would be. The question is, what about all the people who got rich by less than highly spiritual methods? All over the world there are people who use others, abuse others, dominate, lie, cheat, steal, engage in all man ner of disreputable businesses and business practices and they got rich and powerful doing it why why is our sys tim of gaining wealth valid and the opposite not valid why are they allowed to embrace the lower qualities of man while we are discouraged from it we have to think well of everyone we bless those we would rather hate we have to remember that everything we say or think comes back to us multiplied cause and effect. If we yell at a driver for cutting us off on the freeway and make some angry, disparaging remark, then we, in truth, become the recipients of that bad will, ten times stronger than we gave. Why are we held so accountable and these otherwise oriented folks do whatever suits their fancy and they grow richer and more powerful every day? The fact is, regardless of what we read, hear or think, we have absolutely no idea whatsoever how anyone else lives his or her life. What someone does in private can be exactly opposite of his or her public persona. We simply do not know what really happens that allows people to get rich. That is one reason why, how I got rich, books are so popular. Nobody knows what the other guy is doing. What you do is between you and the universe. 
Some people follow the universal laws instinctively. It comes naturally to them, like walking or eating. It feels right to them to do the same things some of us have to learn. We all come into this world with different lessons to learn. Some people know how to get rich from the start. The bottom line is you never know another person's lesson. You never know why or how someone else got rich. You would have to live in their shoes every second of every day and then you still would not know, because each of us has the PRIVC of an individual soul. There is, however, another reason why this system of acquiring wealth is so important. We have entered a new millennium, a new age in the evolution of humankind. The reality we knew only a few years ago no longer exists. The rules are changing. The richest man in the world and CER Tan Lee one of the most successful, Bill Gates, is a college dropout. His dream of a computer in every home grows closer to realization every day. Now, people from all walks of life, armed with a good idea and a little inventiveness, are becoming rich beyond their wildest dreams practically overnight. Opportunities for ordinary people to find lasting and elevated success which were once unimaginable are now commonplace. Yes, the rules are changing and the tables are being turned. What is that quote from the Bible? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Money does, of course, have a power and those who have achieved it by other methods than described here are numerous. But those avenues to success are closing. Even if you want to get rich by hook or by crook, your chances of success are slim to none. There is a changing of the guard. Instead of the good dying young, it is time for the good to win. Keep in mind, also, that a law is a law. If it works for one, it works for all. The money laws work no matter what else you do. If a mafia don ties and gives money away freely, then he will have a tenfold return. Now, his personal relationships may not work well for him. He surely will have to work harder to protect his own life and the lives of those close to him from the horrors he is dishing out. Yes, he'll make money. He probably will not have as much free time or nearly as much fun. Along with his ill-gotten gains, he has acquired an unhealthy debt. We are all accountable to the universe for our actions. Cuz and E. F. Fect. What goes around comes around. I do not want to wear those shoes, do you? A word of caution. Hating the rich and powerful for not doing good is a very dangerous attitude. By damning them you damn up your own good. Those who have obtained wealth by scurrilous means are really doing the best they can. They do not know another way. This has worked for them, and believe me, if you had achieved wealth by other means you would not be reading this book. You are not here to judge anyone. Judging others does nothing to benefit you. The fact is, hate is hate, and what you put out, you get back. Multiplied. Besides, is it not easier to love everyone and let God do the work? Accept it. God does the work. We may earn our living by the sweat of our brow, but the universe gives us the opportunity. He makes it possible for us to have the work. Is it so hard then to believe that our work really is worship? That by praising God, living a good life and tithing on every dollar of income we are simply allowing the universe to fill our cups until they run over? It is a very simple system. The economics of good are powerful and sure. As an example of success of the economics of good, I offer a controversial figure, Ross Perot. To some he is a hero, to others he is a cook. Believe what you will about the man. You can believe that he is a nut, as both the Republican and Democratic parties like to characterize him. You can believe that he is strong-willed and bullheaded. You can believe that he had ulterior motives for running for president. No matter what you believe, the fact is he started with nothing and now has several billion dollars. He tithes on every dollar of income. He is loyal to his people and believes in the greater humanity of man. Ross may be a nut, he may be extreme and fundamental in full lowing the universal laws, but whatever else you say about him, realize how he got rich. The source of his wealth is the same as yours. Ross has given huge amounts of money to charity. 
He personally financed attempts to free POWs of the Vietnam War long before our Washington politicians even admitted there were any. He organized and funded the only success full rescue of Americans from Iran during the American Embassy hostage crisis in the early 80s. And regardless of your political views, it was primarily his money that financed his presidential campaigns. His political debt was nil. You can criticize Ross till the next tax hike, but you must admit that Ross Perot follows the universal laws and is now a billionaire. He is one of God's best customers. And God takes care of his best customers. Ross Perot is an excellent example of new age success. His wealth is derived from good. Good is not popular. Mr. Negative is popular. He works hard at being popular. He wants you to believe in lack and guilt and unfair play. Because those things keep you enslaved to failure. They fill your days with drudgery instead of fun. And they keep you from claiming your birthright of wealth, happiness and good health. This time around, good wins. Believe it. Buy it. Own it. You do not, under any circumstances, have to hurt others to get ahead. God will give you everything you need for incredible success if you just let him. The universe needs your success. It needs good decisions and good actions driving the behavior of the world. One good success breeds a chain reaction of good success. The world needs more good guys. I remember this film about science that was shown over and over again while I was growing up. It was shown on TV. It was shown in the classroom and it was shown in assemblies. I cannot forget it, actually. The show demonstrated very effectively how a chain reaction works. Someone had placed about 10 zillion mousetraps in a room. Each mousetrap was set with two ping pong balls, 20 zillion balls total. The narrator tells how, once started, a chain reaction grows exponentially. It gets faster and faster as each new reaction is triggered. To demonstrate, the narrator throws one ping pong ball into the mousetrap, ping pong ball reaction thing. Wow! At first, the reaction was slow. Only two balls popped up from the one, then four, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty-two. Eventually, all twenty zillion ping pong balls were triggered. The room was a blur with white ping pong balls. Right now, you can be one of the first to ring the bell of outrageous success. Your success can trigger a couple more, and those a couple more and so on and so on. You might think of what you are doing as building a spiritual multi-level business. Getting rich can be a cause. Or you can just enjoy giving and receiving good. Either way, you get to live a rich, joyous and healthy life. Relying on this method of success means you do not have to look over your shoulder every time a car backfires or go white when a highway patrolman pulls alongside your car. You do not have to drink Maalox when the IRS wants you to stop by for a visit or stare at your shoes when a street person stands next to you with a sign that reads, will work for food. There is no success more rewarding than one you can enjoy all the time. That is, truly, getting rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 25. The Big Game. Ever wonder about the meaning of life? Ever wonder why we are here? Why we are born? Why we sleep, eat, reproduce and die? Ever wonder what the reason is that we grace this particular planet with our presence? Well, part of the answer has been in our literature for centuries. It is all a game. Life, death, wealth, poverty, it is all a game. A real game with your will pitted against your prejudice and your fear. You and Mr. Negative slugging it out in the age-old battle of good over evil. He wants you to quit. He wants you to believe that truth is a lie. He wants to get into your head and destroy your hopes and your dreams. Do not let him. He is scripted to lose. You have seen or read the story many times. Good always wins. The only way to fail is to stop trying, to quit, to do what Mr. Negative wants. When the going gets tough, let God take over. He is your guide, your protector, your agent, your employer, your client, your lover, your friend, 
your counsel, your everything. He is the very definition of success. Write down what you want. Visualize it. Stay detached. Get enthusiastic. At all times you must stay happy and enthusiastic. Love the life you have. Forget the small stuff. You are here on this planet to learn qualities that will lift you up and carry you forward. It is not an accident that you want the things you want. This is all part of a greater universal plan. You desire the things you want because of the lessons you must learn to get them. You are here to learn specific lessons. Those lessons can be represented by a certain level of material gain. As you learn these lessons you acquire the material things associated with each lesson. Material possessions are relatively unimportant in this life. You can, for example, live your whole life and never ride in a motorized vehicle. Some Amish do. They ride in horse-drawn carriages. They have no electricity, no televisions, no washers and dryers, no telephones or computers, and they live very satisfying lives. We need food, water, shelter and clothing. That's it. Love helps, of course. But for all practical purposes, we do not need the material things of life. Yet even though material things do not mat tear, it is absolutely necessary to have the things we want. Because having those things is integral to learning our lessons. A new car, for example, means nothing. It is ultimately a smelly, noisy, rusting hunk of metal destined for the scrap heap. What is important is the lesson we learn which allows us to have the new car. The new car is nothing, but having it means we have learned who we are. It is a reflection of our progress. It makes our lesson real. If you are worth a new Mercedes-Benz S600, why not have one? If material things do not really matter, then it does not matter tear either way. You might as well have them as not. This is the secret to having everything. This is the essence of the power of acquiring wealth. Want it. Visualize it. Detach from it. Accept it. Open your heart and let the energy of the universe flow through you. Become a hollow reed, and feel the power of creation flowing through you. At the same time, you must not expect to receive what God does not want for you. You may ask for something which requires a lesson you are not yet ready for. Regardless of what the universe sends your way, know that what you receive is exactly what you need at that point in time. Trust the force of eternity to promote your best interests at all times. How often do you think back on your life and recount the hard times you went through? How often do you laugh at the victories you won against seemingly impossible odds? Every gathering of old friends or family enjoys a retelling of the tales of younger years and lessons learned. Why should today be any different? Why should your less sons today be any less arduously fought? Would the 1998 Super Bowl victory by the Denver Broncos be as sweet for John Elway if he had not lost three times before? Ask for the things you want. Detach and give them to the universe. Then live your life with every ounce of courage, love and enthusiasm you can muster. Enjoy this moment in time, it will come no more. Today's lesson learned becomes tomorrow's fading memory. By reading this book and following its suggestions you have discovered the heavenly garden of wealth. I invite you to enter and join us, to inhale the fragrance of its beauty, to stay and tend the garden for life. You are a fantastic creature. Part animal, yet primarily a spiritual being connected to the universal flow of consciousness. Your job is to enjoy the thrill of victory and the lessons learned. Love every minute of your life, and you are always the victor. You are forever rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 26. The Invisible Path. Congratulations. You are still with us. Apparently you feel this system of success is for you. Or at least, you are willing to give it a try. Now, we step off into the wild blue yonder. We grab hold of that ever-present challenge to your success. We must confront the single biggest reason for not maintaining your success once you find it, your ego. Success is a journey. Along that journey you find many new and exciting gems, 
treasures and storehouses of truth and wisdom. Sure, you think you are looking for diamonds, rubies and emeralds, but these are only physical manifestations of spiritual realities. Trinkets that proclaim to the world your success in overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds, to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, to learn the lessons God has laid upon your path. We might as well start with the number one lesson in everybody's path. Not all paths have the same lessons, but there is one we all have in common. We must all learn that the all-encompassing power of eternity is supreme. Not us. Though we may feel God's presence inside us, we are not God. No matter what your ego says. You are mortal and all that you have or ever will have comes from the universe. Not from you or anything you do. The ego comes in two separate but equal forms. The first ego form is the I. As in I did it all. Everything I have I earned myself. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. Nobody did this for me. I worked my fingers to the bone. I struggled. I fought the battles. I won the victories. I took the bull by the horns and made my success. I built this business with my own two hands. I found my wife and gave her everything she has. I made him what he is today. My husband was nothing before I met him. I gave you the money that allowed you to succeed. I supported you. I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. Obviously these, I, tantrums can go on and on and on. The second ego form is the not I, as in I cannot do anything. I am not worthy. I am not doing everything I should do. I am not working hard enough. I am not a good father. I am not supporting my family well enough. I am such a failure. I am a poor lover, mother, sister, brother, husband, son, daughter. I never learn. I always make mistakes. I am not who I thought I was. I am letting others down. I always seem to make the wrong decisions. I am poor. I am a pitiful excuse for a human being. And on and on and on. Yuck. I do not know which is worse. Actually, they are equally disgusting, and they are exactly the same thing. They both say, I am more powerful than God. Both take the universe out of the provider role and replace it with you and your limited resources. Thinking you are greater than God is a huge mistake. The first ego says, I can do it all, while the second is saying, I can undo it all. I am more negative than God is positive. Wow. Think about that. Either way you are putting yourself before the all-powerful force of the universe. You are saying that you are superior to the forces that created Earth itself. You are saying that you are greater than infinity. Outside of that being ludicrous, it puts you in a terribly tenuous position. The first thing that can happen if you let your ego get between you and your creator is that he will allow you to try to do everything on your own. This is not a good choice. This means you go back to square one and start over. All that God has given you can disappear in a heartbeat. Including your life. There's a story about a man who begged God to make him rich so he could better serve God's cause on earth. Practically overnight this man became one of the richest men in his country, which happened to be Turkey. He struck it rich in the cotton exchange. He was extremely successful beyond his wildest dreams. Then, God sent a messenger to him. And this messenger asked for money to help with God's work. The messenger reminded the man that the reason he had grown rich was to help with God's work.